How do we enter data into an Excel? You can simply start typing in as simple as that. Okay, let, let's say I, I have a business and I'm entering the profits made by the business across different years. So I might want to uh, start at A1, okay, let's say the year, and then the profit made by that business across different years. So let's say I, um, I have data for 2018, 2019, so on and so forth. So I'll just manually enter. Later, we will see the shortcuts. Okay, I have data for four years. And whatever is the profit that the business has made, let's say 10,000, 12,000, let's say 14,000, let's say 15,000. Okay, data entry. Very simple way, just when I, I'm basically entering each and every value into the cells. Okay. After we have entered the data, next thing that you might want to do is format. Format the data a little bit. We'll not get into the details of formatting. We shall do that as we proceed further. Basic formatting would be to assign a proper data type to that field. Okay. So this field has currency information. I'm saying it is profit. Let's say this is the profit made by a business. And let's say this uh, data is in dollars. Okay. So I might want to assign an appropriate data type to that field. How do we do that? We can select the column. You see, how do you select an entire column? You have to just go to that alphabet there and click there. The entire column gets selected. And if I have to select an entire row, I will go to the row number. Look at the mouse pointer changing the shape into an arrow there. If I click, it's selected. And what if we might want to select the whole complete sheet? We will click here on the top right corner over here. The complete sheet would be selected. Okay. So this column, I will go here and change its data type. General meaning, there would be no specific format. You can put alphabetical data or numerical data or alphanumerical data, combination of alphabets and numbers and special characters, anything would be okay. If something is numerical, you can assign number as the data type. Here, I know that this is currency. So I will use currency as the data type. The moment I use currency, what happened? Depending on my system locale. Okay, my system locale is India. So it is using Indian rupee as the currency symbol. Indian rupee and it is automatically introduced decimal places. So that is the default. Based on your system locale, the default currency will be given to the data. Now, I, I don't want that. Let's say I want to put some other currency symbol here. This is, let's say, a, a business that runs in the US. So this is all in dollars. Then we can go to this icon here, okay, and change it. So if it is India, we get the rupee symbol. It is UK, we get the uh, pound symbol. If it is Europe, we get the euro symbol. It is United States, then we get the dollar. And there are other accounting formats also that we can explore. So I will right now change this to United States. Okay, dollar symbol has come. And I know for sure that my value, whatever data I enter into this field will not have decimals. So I don't want to show the decimals, suppose. Then we can simply select the column again. And here is the icon to reduce the number of decimals, decrease decimal. Okay, they will go away. So you see the decimals I have removed. All right, so basic formatting. When you're entering the data into a field, Depending on what data you might be entering into it, what it would hold, right? Depending on why you're creating that field, what information do you want it to hold? Accordingly, you can assign an appropriate data type. We can also have date information in short date format, long date format, time information. We can show data as percentages and a lot of other options are available. And if we are not happy with, or if these options are not helping us out, we can definitely go and explore additional options as well. Okay, so this is some basic introduction in, to the tool itself. Um, now, what we will do is, I will open an existing uh, workbook which has some data in it, and we will talk about the big five, the five basic functions that everybody needs to be familiar with, whether or not you are into data analytics. These are basic things that everybody is expected to know. The big five or the basic functions.
what are the basic functions there are five of them sum okay there is average minimum of the data maximum of the data and count these are famously referred to as the big five so let's apply these five functions on some data that i will show you and we will work with it or let's just apply it here itself let me apply it over here itself I'll put just one more year and let's say um 18000 okay you see i entered 18000 but it automatically applied the currency symbol why so because this whole column has been formatted and given the data type of accounting okay that we are telling that this is currency it holds currency is what we have already given so it's doing so now um, how do we get the summation of the data present in any column or any field if i have to get the sum it is pretty easy whenever you have to type in a formula or calculate something in tableau we must begin uh, sorry in in excel okay we must begin with an equal to sign you have to begin with an equal to sign so equal to and followed by that we will give the name of the function i am talking about summing up the data right so i will start typing in sum and as you can notice uh, the auto complete feature okay the auto complete feature of the tool is popping up all the functions that have those three characters in them sum sum if sum if sum product so many things are there from here we can go ahead and choose whatever we are trying to look for okay so i'll just do a double click on this particular function sum then followed by that you can notice how the syntax is appearing over here so it's a very very user friendly tool it's giving you the syntax summation of what we have to give the number whatever is highlighted in bold color is what it's expecting now let's say i just have to take sum of two numbers 10 comma and look at this when i put a comma now it's expecting the second number will be input will be given as input okay so 12 comma now it's expecting that i will give the third number as the input 15 suppose and then until and unless i put a comma it will not highlight the fourth number when i put a comma it's highlighting the fourth number <clears throat> okay if i don't put a comma that's it so whatever comes in square brackets is actually optional the first parameter which is not in square brackets that you have to give mandatorily now i will close the bracket and hit the enter key so summation of the three numbers that i have uh, i had manually given as an input is so and so all right now when you go to the cell where you have applied a formula here in the formula bar this is referred to as the formula bar Okay, here we can see the formula that we have typed in. All right, and the cell reference you can see over here. So what is 38 over here in the BH cell actually indicating? It is indicating the summation of these three numbers, 10, 12, and 15, which is 37 okay but i want the summation of these numbers which are already given as uh, data which are present as data in this column okay so what i will do is i will simply delete it by hitting the delete key okay and i'm going to type in equal to sum of sum of what we can even give data that is already present by referencing to it how do we reference to it by the address of that cell what is the cell address of this field b2 when i click there tableau is automatically taking b2 plus b3 plus i'll select this one b4 plus if i select this one it is b5 plus and if i select this one it is b6 oh now observe the color this is a very interesting feature you see bleep b2 it highlights the corresponding cell you know it highlights the corresponding cell and it gives you a different color for each cell you can see b2 in blue then there's b3 in red it is highlighted it's coming in a red 
in purple we have b4 and the cell b4 is highlighted accordingly in purple color b5 is in green and the cell is accordingly highlighted in green color okay so after providing all this data means what i am referencing okay what am i doing here i am referencing what am i referencing i am referencing a particular cell okay every cell has an address and we are referencing the data in that cell by providing the address of that cell so now that i have covered the complete data i'll simply close the bracket and hit enter so this is the summation of the data present in this in these fields in these cells what data present in b2 b2 is 10000 B3 is twelve thousand. B4 is fourteen thousand. B5 is fifteen thousand. B6 is eighteen thousand. Okay, so we are referencing the cell using the cell address. Okay, we are referencing the cell using the cell address. So that was summation. Now, rather than manually typing or manually selecting each cell one after the other, we can also give this information as a range. Okay, we can give this as a range. So if I am, if I were to give it as a range, it will be sum of starting at this particular cell, then hold down the control key, shift key, and press the down arrow. Control shift. plus down arrow that will select the entire range of values so you see b2 to b6 look at the colon mark between b2 and b6 the colon mark is indicating that we are starting at b2 and from there we are going down up to b6 okay and now when i hit the enter key the same thing will happen the complete range of values starting from b1 up to b6 are summed up this is the formula that we have used to get the summation of the data over there okay now um let me compute the average of the data so how do we get the average equal to we can start typing in okay or let's say you are absolutely not familiar with the functions that are there then you can go up to the formulas uh, ribbon okay and you can go and click on this insert function option the very first one insert function and here you can search for the functions what are the uh, recent ones all of them are there in alphabetical order and for every function down here you will get an explanation okay whatever function you choose detailed explanation of the purpose of that function what it does meaning the explanation the syntax and examples also will be provided okay so it returns the average arithmetic mean of the arguments which function average function if you would like to get additional help on that function if this information you if you feel this information is not sufficient i need to know more about this function there is an option called as more help on this function so when we click on it 